Hi everyone, Alex here. After watching Archipel's interview with Sakamoto Shinichi, I started to understand just how essential historical accuracy is to Sakamoto's work. This fact is most evident in the art style of Innocent, which gives the reader a sense of hyperrealism. Sakamoto achieves hyperrealism through using reference photos, period clothing, and research about the Sansons and the French Revolution. But historical accuracy is not only a style for Sakamoto, it also serves a necessary function. Realism, both in art style and facts, help make the story seem more believable to the reader. However, there are times when what looks real is not necessarily real, and what looks fake is not as far from the truth as it seems. Sakamoto sometimes uses his creative license to cherry-pick historical facts to better fit into his narrative. Because of this, I argue that we should look at the accuracy of this historical series to see how each historical or non-historical fact adds to the greater narrative of the story. Specifically, in this video, I'll be considering the historical accuracy of the Sanson's Executioner's Sword. Sakamoto depicts and describes his sword like this. This long sword is for use in executions and was passed down through the Sanson family. There are three holes located at the point. If you swing it vertically downwards, it will not sing. But if the blade is even a little bit on its side, the sword will sing, as the criminal screams echo. The size of the sword is massive, and we can use Charles' body as a reference for scale. Etched into the sword is a symbol of Lady Justice. We also see his unsteadiness, as he remembers a botched execution while practicing his swing, missing the mark over and over again causing the sword to sing. There are a few obvious questions about the historical accuracy of this version of the Executioner's Sword. For example, how is it possible for a 15-year-old, let alone an adult, to lift such a heavy sword? Surprisingly, the length of Sakamoto's sword is pretty accurate. The length of an Executioner's Sword can vary, but it tends to be on the long side, measuring between 3 to 3.5 three feet long, while the blade alone measures 2.5 to 3 feet long. These swords can also tend to be relatively thick, measuring up to 3 inches wide. They could weigh up to 5 pounds, which is pretty manageable for most people. The Executioner's Sword is an example of the phrase, form follows function, because the weight and the size of the sword maximize its ability to cut by placing the center of gravity closer to the point of the blade. The tip of Sakamoto's sword is also pretty accurate. Executioner's swords tend to be blunted and rounded at the peak because they're meant for cutting, not stabbing. More importantly, these three holes at the tip are present in many executioner swords found across Europe. They're called bloody, and the purpose of these holes is a heavily disputed topic among historians. One theory is that the three holes represent the Christian Holy Trinity, like God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. In reality, this is probably wrong. There are other executioner swords with two or four holes instead of three. There are other interesting theories, like by Bill O'Neill, who theorizes that the holes could make the spirit of an executed person leave for eternity easier, or that they are used as marks for discarded swords that ought not be to use because they are used in executions. Regardless, most theories about the holes at the tip of an executioner's sword are either functional or symbolic. It's interesting to see Sakamoto offer up both kinds of theories, though. On the one hand, Sakamoto tells us that the function of the holes does help train young executioners to swing their swords properly. If their swing is off balance, then the sword will sing, as Sakamoto puts it. On the other hand, the three holes can symbolically represent God and the rest of the Holy Trinity. This relationship between religion and execution is something I address in my video about justice and innocent. However, the sword is more symbolic than just the bloody. Consider the etching of Lady Justice on the Sanson sword. This kind of etching was commonplace among executioner swords. Also, these images of justice were interchangeable with religious depictions and the names of locations or famous people. Each of these images are supposed to justify the act of execution. In this video, we looked at the historical accuracy of the executioner's sword shown in Innocent. We could see how this sword is not merely a functional tool, but also has symbolic meaning. Throughout this series, many objects like the executioner's sword or even characters can have functional and symbolic purposes that help add to Sakamoto's story. If you're interested in reading more about Executioner Swords, I refer to Willem Null's work to make this video. I highly suggest reading it if you have the time. It's short, less than four pages, so it's a quick read. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching to the end. I'll see you next time.